valence bond theory. Valence bond theory is all about valence electrons making a bond and how uh, they can do that. Okay. Before I get started with it, and here I come to see one more thing. वेलेंस बॉन्ड थ्योरी शुरू करने से पहले तो हमें ये मेक शुरू करना होगा कि इसके कुछ प्री रिक्विजिट्स पूरे हो जाएं सिंस लाइबा ने वो हमारे साथ किए मेरे साथ किए हुए हैं लेकिन अली ने नहीं किए हुए तो अली के लिए कुछ चीजें कंफ्यूजिंग हो जाएंगी सो व्हाट आई एम गोना डू इज दैट जस्ट टू मेक श्योर दैट ऑल ऑफ अस आर ऑन सेम पेज एंड स्पेशली फॉर अली आई एम गोइंग टू रिवाइज अ फ्यू पॉइंटर्स राइट आई एम गोना क्लोज द बुक एंड इंस्टेड आई एम गोना स्टार्ट ऑफ विद आवर व्हाइट बोर्ड and since that happened last time aap logon ko yaad hoga ke aap a uh, number of pages apni marzi se select kar sakte hain so i want you all to start with uh, page number 1 i don't know which page is showing in print of you but come up to page number 1 theek hai okay if you are all on page 1 let's get started sabse pehli cheez ali uh, revise kar do कि हमारे पास कुछ चीजें आई जी सी एस सी में एग्जिस्ट करती थी और वो बड़े माइनर से कॉन्सेप्ट्स थे इट वाज जस्ट लाइक इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड नॉट एक्सप्लेनिंग देम इन डिटेल सो दैट्स व्हाई वी हैव ऑल ऑफ दिस आई एम नॉट एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग ऑन दिस मेसी पेज सिंस दिस पेज कंटेन्स टू मैनी कलर एंड टू मैनी रिटर्न स्टाफ आई एम जस्ट गो विद बेसिक्स ठीक है यू नो के एटम के अंदर हमारे पास जो शेल्स होते हैं हम उन्हें नंबर करते हैं ठीक है so i'm going to start from the extreme left hand side ali and you would see ki maine shells ko number kiya hua hai theek hai you would also see ke uh, us numbering ko maine start hi one se kiya hua hai and when i use number 1 shell number 1 for which i'm using the small letter n over here theek hai uh, you would uh, already probably know from icse that one is the closest a shell closest to the nucleus it's the innermost shell when i use number 2 it's somewhat farther from nucleus number 3 is more farther and number 4 in comparison to all of these would be the farthest shell understandable yes sir okay ali what i'm going to do is that i'm going to divide these shells into further bifurcations to make it easier for you why am i doing this i'm doing this because if i talk about just a shell hum is shell ko pehle represent karte rahe hain nucleus se get a simple सर्कल से ठीक है इन दैट सर्कल इफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग यू वोट नो विच पार्ट ऑफ द सर्कल द इलेक्ट्रॉन वुड बी एट एनी इंस्टेंट अभी अगर मैं आपसे पूछूं कि वो इस सर्कल के इस हिस्से में होगा या इस हिस्से में होगा या राइट पर होगा या लेफ्ट पर होगा एट एनी इंस्टेंट यू कैन नॉट एड्रेस द इलेक्ट्रॉन के विच पार्ट ऑफ द सर्कल वुड इट बी और विच पार्ट ऑफ द शेल वुड इट बी सो वट वी डू इज दैट वी डिवाइड दैट शेल इन टू फर्दर सब शेल सब शेल आर द फर्स्ट बाइफिकेशन ऑफ अ शेल ठीक है तो सब शेल्स क्या होते हैं शेल को हम फर्दर डिवाइड कर देते हैं इन टू पार्ट ठीक है सो दीज पार्ट डिस्क्राइब दम अब इसमें ये होता है कि सारे शेल्स को एक तरतीब से हम डिवाइड नहीं करते हैं ठीक है वट वी डू इज दैट फर्स्ट शेल इज डिवाइडेड इन टू ओनली वन सब शेल एंड वी यूज द लेटर एस फॉर दैट ऑल सब शेल्स आर रिप्रेजेंटेड विद स्मॉल अल्फाबेट्स और राइट सो वन एस मीन्स के फर्स्ट शेल है और एस सब शेल है You would notice कि जो second subshell है उसकी दो bifurcation है S and P two इसलिए put किया गया कि तो आपको बताया जा सके कि ये second shell की bifurcation है. So there are two bifurcations to second shell, three bifurcations to third shell, and four bifurcations to fourth shell, which actually concludes it. The bifurcations are S, P, D, and F written on the extreme top left corner. ठीक है. So there are four subshells in total. फर्स्ट शेल में सिर्फ एक सब शेल होता है सेकंड में सिर्फ दो होते हैं थर्ड में तीन होते हैं फोर्थ एंड ऑनवर्ड्स सब में चार चार की डिवीजन होती है ठीक है सो एक्चुअली द शेल दैट इज क्लोजेस्ट टू द न्यूक्लियस इज द सिंपलेस्ट वन एज वेल और जैसे जैसे आगे शेल्स बढ़ते जाते हैं तो उनकी बाइफिकेशन भी बढ़ती जाती हैं ठीक एंड देन सब शेल्स आर फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन टू ठीक है वो उसकी आगे फर्दर बाइफिकेशन है ऑर्बिटल्स में फिर हमारे पास और केसेस आ जाते हैं इस बाइफिकेशन को समझाने के लिए जरूरी है दैट वी मूव ऑन टू पेज नंबर टू सो लेट्स ऑल ऑफ अस मूव ऑन टू पेज नंबर टू ठीक है 
पेज नंबर टू गिव्स यू अ समवट अ बेटर आइडिया ठीक है हाउ इट इज गोइंग गिव यू अ पिक्चर दैट यू माइट हैव सीन ऑन फ्यू अदर बुक्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम योर्स एंड यू वुड नो कि हम कई दफा एटम की कोई और पिक्चर देते हैं कई दफा हम एटम को सिंपली ऐसे ड्रॉ कर देते हैं फर्स्ट शेल सेकेंड शेल थर्ड शेल लेट मी टेल यू जिस इज अ चॉइलिस ड्रॉइंग एंड इट हैज नथिंग टू डू विद एक्चुअल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एटम ठीक है which brings me to this colored and somewhat missing diagram ali i always admit that my drawing skills are poor so hence you you can notice ki yahan par bhi hamare paas ek badi messy si diagram bani hui well i would try to justify it with my words since the diagram is pretty uh, drawn with a pretty bad skills theek hai so sabse pehle andar aapko light orange color ya yellowish orange milega ये फर्स्ट शेल है फर्स्ट शेल पे सिर्फ एक पाइपकेशन होता है वन एस तो आपको एक ही मिलेगा ठीक है एस हैज सफेरिकल शेप दो एस डिज नॉट स्टैंड फॉर सफेरिकल इट स्टैंड फॉर शार्प ठीक है लेकिन इसकी सफेरिकल गोल शेप होती है जिसकी वजह से हमने सारे शेल्स को शुरू में गोल बनाना शुरू किया था देन वी कैन टू नो के सेकेंड की दो पाइपकेशन होती है एस और पी एस जो होता है सेकंड का वो भी सफेरिकल होता है लेकिन जो उसका पी होता है वो डम्पल शेप होता है ठीक है और पी तीनों एक्सेस में एग्जिस्ट करता है पी एक्स एक्सेस में भी डम्बल शेप में एग्जिस्ट करता है क्यों वाई एक्सेस में भी डम्बल शेप में एग्जिस्ट करता है क्यों और जी एक्सेस में भी डम्बल शेप में एग्जिस्ट करता है लाइक दिस सो यू वुड नोट दैट आर डार्कर ऑरेंज और समवट ऑरेंज रेड कलर उससे मैंने अंदर एक और शेल बनाया हुआ एक और सर्कल बनाया हुआ ये वाला सर्कल और फिर एक्स एक्सेस का और फिर वाई एक्सेस का और जी एक्सेस का आप स्विच कर सकते हैं एक्सेसेस सिंस इट्स डिस्कशन ठीक है तो आपके पास इस तरह से सेकंड शेल होता है फिर बारी आती है थर्ड शेल की विच आई ड्रॉन विद पर्पल थर्ड का सर्कल भी मैंने ड्रॉ किया हुआ है थर्ड के पी और भी मैंने ड्रॉ किए हुए हैं इंटेंशनली थ्री डी नहीं किया सिंस उसके स्ट्रक्चर्स कॉम्प्लिकेटेड शेप के भी होते हैं वन टू थ्री डी को हम ए एस के लेवल पे एक्सप्लेन नहीं करते वो हम ए टू के लेवल पे एक्सप्लेन करते हैं सो वो कीप इट दैट ऑन होल्ड और वो हम नहीं बताते तो अगर हम इस तरह से ड्रॉप करें इसे और हर ऑर्बिटल के अंदर में आपने नोटिस किया होगा कि हर ऑर्बिटल के एक्सट्रीम एंड पे मैंने दो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दो एक्सट्रीम एंड पर ड्रॉप किए हुए हैं ठीक है तो इससे आपको अंदाजा हो जाएगा कि हाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स मूव अराउंड द एटम in somewhat complicated manner and not that simple circular manner aisa nahi hota theek okay so the point i am trying to make in this vbt valence bond theory are these shapes i'm going to discuss s as a spherical remember spherical is a little bit different from circle circle is completely circle spherical is something which is a little bit flattened from top and bottom and the rest of the parts act as a circle this is a sphere this is a circle there is a very minute difference between both but mathematics clears this difference more than chemistry or other science subjects does all right and p is going to be dumbbell shaped dumbbells that are usually used for exercising we also call it lobe shaped and both same size lobes are present on uh both the ends whether you call it lobe shaped whether you call it dumbbell shaped both names are correct both names are uh, awarded marks with if you use them in exams make sense so i'm going to i'm going to use these shapes in vbt so i'm going to close the whiteboard and we're going to go ahead with vbt all right and you will notice we'll discuss simplest of covalent bonds uh, in terms of these shapes of subshells all right so let's talk about the simplest covalent bond on the planet if you remember when we started covalent bonding back in igcse or o levels the simplest example we could come up with was hydrogen the smallest atom on the planet and the simplest of covalent bonds right is tarah ka structure hum show karte hain now at this point now at this point uh let me explain it with the help of their subshells drawn the subshells are s 
आप जानते हैं कि इसके अंदर एक ही इलेक्ट्रॉन होता है ऑफ कोर्स वो स्पर्श शल में होगा स्पर्श सब शल में होगा हम इसे वन एस वन लिख सकते हैं दिस वन रिप्रेजेंट नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स राइट सो एक हाइड्रोजन का एक इलेक्ट्रॉन दूसरे हाइड्रोजन का दूसरा इलेक्ट्रॉन दोनों सपैरिकल सिस्टम्स में एक दूसरे से क्लोज होते हैं और लिटरली ओवरलैप कर जाते हैं दीज आर नॉट जस्ट इमेजिनेशन ऑफ ह्यूम दीज आर एक्चुअल डायग्राम्स दैट वी हैव नाउ बीन एबल टू सी सिंस आफ्टर ट्वेंटी थर्टीन और समथिंग लाइक दैट सिंस वी हैव दैट स्कैनिंग टनलिंग माइक्रोस्कोप which has been named back in o level and igcse books as well as named in the very first chapter of this a level book right and we get somewhat this kind of structure which has both the nuclei on both end and the inner part is somewhat an overlap which actually is the place where electrons tend to revolve, revolve which are shown over here which exactly isn't uh, an updated diagram since if these books are too old let me tell you that the electrons move in somewhat this kind of circle and they do it with such a speed that both the hydrogen atoms consider that they have two electrons of their own that's not true actually they had one electron each in the start before they even overlapped but since the electrons are moving with a such high pace both of them consider that they have the electrons right yes sir yes sir okay i usually compare it with something we all observe with uh, daily life if i talk about fans ceiling fans ceiling fans usually have 3 to 4 wings when we have the ceiling fan turned off you can see the exact shape of the wings and in what point are they directed when you turn it on and it starts moving in a faster manner you won't be able to see the individual fans but every single person can see the entire sphere or the entire circle they are making right so the exact same thing happens to electrons but my analogy is very poor when it comes to the speed at which the wings of the fan are revolving or uh, the speed at which the electrons revolve around the structure make sense since yes, electrons sir. have a very very high speed theek hai uh, fsc ki book mein to hum bade orthodox tarike se padhate hain wo speed bhi code kar dete hain lekin a level ki book mein hum wo speed code nahi karte hain theek hai it's like 2 into 10 to the power 18 meters per something uh, 18 meters or something like that meters per second which is a really really high speed and nothing can match that on this planet except electrons subatomic particles ki jo speed hoti hai so koi badi cheez to match nahi kar sakti since they are so small they are capable of moving that fast theek hai now the point i was trying to make by discussing all of this was to give you the idea how us s subshells born and when s subshells bond yahan par bhi s subshell bond kar raha hai yahan par bhi s subshell bond kar raha hai ye ek is tarah ka overlap portion hame banate hain theek hai so uh, they bond in a, by coming closer to one another and we call it a head on overlap and i hope this phrase gives you a really good idea since for head on i aake ek dusre ke bahut close ho gaye overlap kar gaye so much so that they form a, a single entity a single molecule a single structure theek hai electron density nucleons ke darmiyan bahut concentrate kar jati hai is portion par aur hum is bond ko ek single line se show karte hain and we call single bond as sigma bond and it is shown by this sign yaad rakhiye ki a level ki book mein hamara very next topic sigma bond tha so i had to come up with this explanation to tell you what sigma bond is now keep this head on overlap in your mind and every time we're going to form a sigma bond a single bond uh, a head on overlap would be something that would be particularly common in all sigma bonds now this must arise a question hydrogen ki baat ho rahi hai to uske electron to hote hi s subshell mein hai तो वो एस सब शेल का हेड ऑन ओवरलैप होता है तो क्या पी सब शेल जो कि सफेरिकल नहीं होता 
डम्बल शेप्ड होता है क्या वो भी ऐसा करता है दिस इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच कम्स टू माइंड ठीक है and uh, that is exactly what we are going to explain next and i'm going to move ahead if you don't have any questions about this part can i yes sir okay moving on when this happens with an s and with a p something like this forms they notice kare ye sapatical hai and they are talking about hydrogen of course 1s mein electron hoga they have considered fluorine अगर फ्लोरीन की बात की जाए तो उसका जो आउटर मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन जो शेयरिंग में पार्टिसिपेट करता है वो पी सब से होता है और वो एक्चुअली सेकंड से होता है सेकंड शेल से होता है पी सब से होता है सो दे हैव गिव्ड अस अ लोब शेप स्ट्रक्चर अगेन हेड ऑन ओवरलैप होगा इसका ये हेड इसके अपने हेड के सामने से ओवरलैप करेगा वट हैपन्स इज दैट दिस बिकम समथिंग लाइक दिस ये इस तरह का स्ट्रक्चर बना लेता है We call them irregular lobes. इसके बहुत सारी बुक्स में बहुत सारे नेम्स हैं वेल इरेगुलर और इरेगुलरली शेप्ड और इस तरह के नाम एग्जिस्ट करते हैं इस तरह के लोब के लिए ठीक है वेर वन साइड इज हेवली डेंस्ड एंड दी अदर साइड इज प्री स्मॉल दिस इज फॉर एस एन पी ओवरलैप दिस इज अगेन द सेम सिग्मा बॉन्ड एंड दिस इज अगेन रिप्रेजेंटेड विद द सेम स्ट्रेट लाइन but this time something that has an outermost electron in s subshell is uh, sharing an electron with something that has an outermost electron in the p subshell no matter which shell is that i'm just talking about the subshells makes sense yes sir any example similar to this one like hf or hcl or hbr would be the same thing since all of these would be p subshells combining with the s subshell in this case forming the same single covalent bond which we have been calling as sigma bond and the head on overlap would be there if that makes sense and if that's clear completely let's move on to another scenario where both p subshells combine with one another and the simplest example would be fluorine fluorine or maybe chlorine chlorine or maybe bromine bromine since halogens can give us a pretty good example since in all the cases both of the p subshells are going to share their electrons to form a single covalent bond sigma bond in this case so take a notice both lobe shaped structures overlap with the head ons and what we result in is that we call a toffee shaped structure since you would be pretty familiar with toffees and since these this reminds you of the wrapper part you never interested in this reminds you of the tasty yummy part when you were a child and you were attracted to it a lot since you have grown out of it or of course everybody grows out of it at one point i don't know some people do some people don't uh, even when they are 10 or even when they are 20 they don't grow out of it some people still like toffees but i think this is a pretty good example for this structure right yes sir okay so this is a pp overlap and again this is a heads on overlap okay moving on is book mein bahut zyada detail hai mujhe is book ki koi detail nahi chahiye since wo orthodox detail aapki book mein nahi hai but these diagrams matters a lot that's why i'm only going with diagrams okay then pp overlap me ek aur type bhi hoti hai what they do is that they may overlap sideways instead of going with head on wo sideways overlap kar sakte hain let me tell you for sideways overlap there must be a head on overlap first ek head on overlap ho chuka hota hai फिर साइडवेज ओवरलैप ऊपर के इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऊपर में नीचे के इलेक्ट्रॉन्स नीचे में ट्रैक्ट होते हैं फिर साइडवेज ओवरलैप होता है एंड इट गिव्स अस अ स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस रिमेंबर जहां पे ये ब्लू पोर्शन ड्रॉप किए हुए हैं इन्हें ड्रॉप करने का मकसद आपको ये हिंट देना है कि यहाँ पर इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी मैक्सिमम होगी ये ब्लैक डॉट्स का मतलब है कि यहाँ पे जीरो इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी होगी एंड द चांसेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू एक्सिस्ट हेयर एट एनी इंस्टेंट ड्यूरिंग देर मोशन is almost equal to zero or none all right 
साइडवेज ओवरलैप से जो स्ट्रक्चर बनता है उसके लिए यूजली हम लिप शेप या इस तरह के वर्ड यूज करते हैं अपर लेफ्ट दिस वन एक्ट लाइक लोअर लेफ्ट राइट उसने इसके ऊपर कोई और एग्जाम्पल्स भी दी हुई है एंड लेट मी टेल यू दिस इज द ओनली वन वी नेम एज पाइबॉन एंड पाइबॉन एक्चुअली रिप्रेजेंट द डबल बॉन और द ट्रिपल बॉन लेट्स एक्सप्लेन डबल बॉन्ड फर्स्ट रिमेंबर यू हैव बिन यूज टू टू ड्रॉ टू स्ट्रेट लाइन फॉर अ डबल बॉन्ड let me explain the reason to this the big reason is not the two electron pairs being shared the big reason is this first of all a single line a single covalent bond is made by a head on overlap between two p orbitals which actually brings the other two p orbitals which were supposed to overlap sideways are brought closer and since that is capable to happen hence the other straight line so these double bond these two straight lines depict that first there was a head on overlap between p orbitals and then the p orbitals which were supposed to uh, overlap sideways were brought closer and a sideways overlap occur hence a pi or a double bond was formed this picture actually tells you that a double bond instead consists of one sigma and one pi bond so a double bond consists of this and this entire set of explanation actually explains a triple bond and this would tell you that the central line in a triple bond explains a sigma bond and the two lines one on top one and bottom explain two pi bonds that they form how first of all there is a head on overlap between these structures and then since there are three p uh, subshells uh, sorry the three p orbitals in a subshell so the one at y comes closer for a sideways overlap from top and bottom the one at z also comes closer for a sideways overlap from top and bottom and then there is a single bond right in between which was the reason how the sideways overlap p orbitals came closer then there is a y axis sideways overlap there is a z axis sideways overlap hence all of the electrons are concentrated right in between and these are the spaces where the electron density is supposed to be minimum that's how a triple bond is formed so a double bond is actually one sigma and one pi bond which means one heads on overlap and one sideways overlap and a triple bond is actually a collection of one sigma and two pi bonds which means one heads on overlap this one and let me change the color to explain it this is the heads on overlap and these two including the top and bottom on both the ends are actually two pi bonds so sigma pi pi a total of a triple bond i hope that makes sense to you now this is the exact detail vbt or valence bond theory was very very important since it gave us the idea how the bonds formed which vesper theory was never able to that also discusses the limitations think about it vesper theory was giving you a very good idea about the shape of the molecule about the bond angles present in the molecule but they never discussed how a single or a double or a triple bond formed right so there was a big loophole a big question that was never answered in that theory but vbt on the other hand uh, if not discussing the shapes or the bond angles but clearly is able to explain how a single or sigma bond or how double or triple pi bonds form what kind of overlaps they do tend to make and where does the electron density or finding uh the probability of finding the electron is maximum lies so this theory was able to explain a few more things in a very successful uh, way the previous theory wasn't able to so this was actually a comparative idea between both the theories 
which also gives you an idea that if in exams a question talks about shape or bond angles you need to talk about the whisper theory and the reasoning from whisper theory so you should be talking about the reasoning in terms of uh, lone pairs and bond pairs or how they repel one another and you will successfully be able to answer the question and if they talk about what kind of bonds they have of course these those are single double or triple covalent bonds but there is further reasoning to it how many sigma or pi bonds are there what kind of overlap that was or how that bond was formed or which subshells was were included to overlap with one another of course all of that stuff is answered by this theory so as soon the, as the examiner tends to make a question you would know which theory you need to take help from or which theory words you will be able to answer your whole reasoning with i hope now i have cleared a much bigger picture yes sir any questions so far no sir ali you no sir i kind of get the idea good good in fact great all right so let's move on <clears throat> and now i'm going to give you another kind of this is not a separate theory but this is more like a process that is occurring in the system and we are going to explain this process in order to make sure that the current page we are supposed to get to in our original book is understandable by you the idea as given over here is atomic orbital hybridization do you understand the word hybrid itself from english or from any other subjects hybrid word hybrid rings a bell let's talk about biology as a subject where this word probably have been used already yes we have used it with plants we have used it with animals we have used it uh, when we talk about combining different species maybe different type of mangoes being combined together maybe different type of animals with a similar structure uh, giving off an offspring that doesn't belong exactly to one type of animal i hope uh, if i quote the example of um, a mule from your biology book there it explains that it's an offspring from a donkey and a horse right and they call it as, as a hybrid species a species that has a few properties from both and lacking actually lacking few properties from both as well it has some properties present and some properties absent right and its structure may have a few characteristics from a horse may have a few characteristics from donkey but not complete of both right we started calling those structures and hybrids in those terms phir being a pakistani i am pretty sure ke mangoes ka jaise naam aata hai to you must know that we have many species of mangoes when it comes to that we are probably one of the richest nations on the planet to have hundreds of types of mangoes if other countries and has have hundreds of types of apples and berries and other stuffs we talk about mangoes with pride now you must know some mangoes are large some are small some are more sweeter than others some have more yellowish color some have more whitish so if you combine two different species of mangoes you may come up with a hybrid containing a few properties from either parents right so biology has discussed this not exactly with the word hybrid since we have left this word like a couple of decades ago ab hum hybrid ka word uske liye use nahi karte pehle kya karte the theek hai अब हम उसके हमारे पास उसके लिए और बहुत सारे वर्ड्स हैं लेकिन ऑफ कोर्स रिप्रोडक्शन के चैप्टर में ऐसी चीजें डिस्कस हुई हैं फिर हमने उनके कलर्स जीन्स और इस तरह की चीजें डिस्कस की हुई हैं आई होप यू रिमेम्बर ऑल दैट फ्रॉम बायोलॉजी राइट गुड गुड 
So if you understand all of that from biology, I hope you would understand hybridization of atomic orbitals. And you would be amazed that even at this smaller atomic and subatomic level, hybridization does occur. Which means if we're talking about orbitals, that means those smaller structures are getting hybridized or getting fused with one another. Let me explain. Or is the uh, definition ki explanation mein Ali after jo kuch part missing hai, wo automatically cover ho jayega. So I'm not gonna wait, go with any prerequisites since I'm gonna handle it in the same definition. What is hybridization? Atomic orbitals differ slightly in energy or shapes that we have discussed before. S or P me shape ka ek bada difference hai that you already agree with, right? Okay. Yes. Not just that. Let me explain. S or P me energy ka bhi difference hota hai. S has somewhat lower energy and P has somewhat higher energy in terms of their orbital shells or subshells, whatever that is. Jo just pe term pe baat kare ho. Aap orbital end pe bhi baat kar sakte hain. Aap subshell end pe bhi baat kar sakte hain. And you can talk cumulative at uh, a shell's end. Okay. Well, I'm not talking cumulative. Main orbitals ya subshell ke end par hi baat kare ho. Okay. So, ye kya hota hai ki inki energy aur inki shapes different hain. Ye intermix karte hain aur new orbitals banate hain. Ham unhe hybrid atomic orbitals kehte hain. They differ from parent atomic orbitals in shape, possess specific geometry, and actually they are different in energy too. What we need to state over here, and it's not written right here in the book, is that if four atomic orbitals combine, they result in four hybrid orbitals again, which is pretty interesting, right? Since in biology, that never happens you're actually being used to uh, for a pair of parents and then the daughters. However, if we talk about cells in biology, uh, then you might know with the same number that similar number of parents may be able to give similar number of daughters. Okay? Not in all cases, of course, cells can be sorry cases, but some of them do. And now with biology, Coming back to chemistry, we are saying that you have the atomic orbitals combine, the hybrid orbitals will be made, and the atomic orbitals will be different in the energy of the hybrid orbitals, the energy will be slightly different, and the geometry will be changed. Either this shape will be changed, or this will be changed. You already discussed that. Because when the orbitals overlap, they change their shape. Toffee shape, lip shape, we have many shapes behind this. This is the case. But few others remain. Take it. So let's start with an example. Carbon ki example that then let's discuss and start with the structure of methane. Methane may carbon K and let me explain that with the help of with this. Okay. Ali up kill it for us a confusing hose at that. But let me explain one can there if S exist Kerala revising that. टू के अंदर एस और पी दोनों एक्सिस्ट करते थे रिमेंबर वन शेल है एस या पी सब शेल है पी के केस में मैंने बताया था कि पी एक्स एक्सिस पे भी एक्सिस्ट करता है पी वाई एक्सिस पे भी एक्सिस्ट करता है और पी जेड एक्सिस पे भी एक्सिस्ट करता है ये सारे सेम टाइप ऑफ पीज हैं। पी सब शेल था जब हम उसे पी एक्स बना देंगे तो वो एक ऑर्बिटल हो जाएगा पी वाई बना देंगे तो वो दूसरा ऑर्बिटल हो जाएगा पी जी बना देंगे तो वो तीसरा ऑर्बिटल हो जाएगा दैट्स हाउ अ सब शेल इज डिवाइडेड इनटू एन ऑर्बिटल एंड पी सब शेल इज डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री ऑर्बिटल्स व्हिच आर ओरिएंटेड इन थ्री डिफरेंट एक्सेस एक्स वाई एंड जी रेस्पेक्टिवली हेंस टू पी एक्स टू पी वाई टू पी जी इसे लिखने का ऐसे पर्पस ये होता है कि हम इलेक्ट्रॉन का एड्रेस बड़ी इजीली बता देते हैं आपको पता चल जाएगा वो सेकंड शेल में है पी सब शेल में है वाई ऑर्बिटल में है बहुत आसान हो क्या आप इलेक्ट्रॉन को इजीली एड्रेस कर सकते हैं इट्स मोर लाइक टेलिंग यू द कंट्री ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन द सिटी ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन देन टाउन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड मे बी वी कैन गो हेड विद स्ट्रीट और हाउस नंबर इट्स प्रिटी ईजी वेन यू टेल सम एड्रेस लाइक दैट and they would be able to reach the person. I hope it makes more sense now, right? 
Ali? Yes, sir. Good, good. Then the boxes above give you the idea whether there are one electrons in them or two. You would notice that the box may contain an electron like this, or a box may contain an electron, electrons, a set of electrons like this. When I do that, I try to actually tell you that the electrons which we have been drawing in pairs around a, uh, in a nucleus in a shell like this, so this pair can be drawn like this. This gives you an idea that both electrons do not uh, rotate in the similar way. When I use the word rotate, let me explain by giving you an analogy of planet Earth. I hope you remember that planet Earth revolves and rotates at the same time. It revolves around the sun and gives us four seasons in a year, and it rotates around its own axis, right? And gives us the 24 hour cycle of a day and night. So when I use the word rotate for an electron, the electrons, these pairs are capable of rotating either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Hence we draw uh, these with an arrow upwards or an arrow downwards, like this. Okay? This is book, it's made in this way. In Cambridge, you make proper full arrows. It's made in this way. Use this, not this. This is an old method and isn't used in Cambridge anymore. All right. Okay. Kisi shell, kisi orbital mein agar ek electron hai, to waise show kiya hua hai. Do hain, to waise show kiya hua hai. Do hain, to wo completely filled hai. Ek hai, to wo half filled hai. Aur usme koi or electron sharing se aa sakta hai. Let me erase all of this. You will be able to see that one is pura filled hua hai. Of course, carbon ke case mein first shell completely fill hua hota hai. Phir hum second fill karna shuru karte hain. Us mein bhi 2s fill hai. Aap dekh rahe hain 2xy. Well, let's not go to this reasoning. Hum ye wali state dekhte hain. Ye nahi dekhte. Thik hai. Let's not go with that. 1s pura fill hai. 2s mein ek electron hai. 2p mein ek hai. 2py uh, mein ek hai. 2pz mein ek hai. You would notice there are four vacant spaces. And that's how carbon is able to make four single covalent bonds. So, you have S, one PX, one PY, and one PZ atomic orbitals. And actually, these four overlap. And you have then hybridizations. Okay? Now, let's see the next one. 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 Let's see the Let's go with diagrams. It's difficult to explain it in words. It's easier to explain it in diagrams. You remember S, spherical shape, P, a lobe. At x axis, y a lobe at y axis, z a lobe at z axis. You are saying that this is y ka z or z ka y switch. Ho gaya. Actually, x, y, z mathematics ke aur tana se hum slightly explain karte hain. x yahan put karte hain, y yahan put karte hain, z yahan put karte hain. But in chemistry, when these structures are made, the books are made slightly differently. It doesn't matter. Hai? That's not the point of discussion for today. The point of discussion is that they all have different shapes. And S orbital has different energy than P orbitals. What happens when they all four combine, they give us four of these hybrid orbitals. Remember, when S or P ka overlap, we had read in VBT that we have this kind of structure. Ban hai. A bigger, huge electron density portion on one side and a very small on the other. Irregularly shaped lobe, if you remember, from a few moments earlier. Right? Is tarah ke char hybrid orbitals humare paas aajate hain. Aur wo isi tarah ke charon combine karte hain carbon ke upar. Thik hai? Carbon ke paas ek hybrid orbital hai ye wala. Ek hybrid orbital hai ye wala. Ek ye wala. Aur ye wala. Aur ye charon hybrid orbitals head on overlap se S orbital of hydrogen ke saath combine kar jate hain to form single, four single covalent bonds of CH4 methane. What is the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is that hydrogen has a simple Bohi S subshell. Here, 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 spherical. But carbon has hybridized orbitals which shape na S se milti hai, na P se milti hai. Okay? You got some ajagi? Good. If you understand this, let's get back to our 
own book since it's about time we go over there. So sigma bonds and pi bonds, a single covalent bond is formed when two non-metal atoms combine. We discussed each atom that combines has an atomic orbital containing a single unpaired electron. And if we have vacant space, so sharing will In the formation of a covalent bond, the atomic orbitals overlap so that a combined orbital is formed containing two electrons. We call this combined orbital a molecular orbital. This is something new. हम उसे फिर atomic orbital नहीं कहते हैं हम उसे molecular orbital कहते हैं since a molecule is about to be formed or actually has been formed already ठीक है the amount of overlap of atomic orbitals determines the strength of the bond greater the overlap stronger the bond ठीक है for example अगर दो hydrogen bonds को देखें दो s atomic orbitals combine करते हैं और आपके पास एक molecular orbital hydrogen molecule का बन जाता है let's explain a few points over here covalent bonds are formed when atomic orbitals overlap Greater the overlap, stronger the bond. Mixing of atomic orbitals is called hybridization. Mixing an S with three, two, or one p-type orbitals. And I'm, I will explain two and one. I have only three while I explain here. Forms sp3, sp2, and sp hybrid orbitals. I have already explained it in detail, mein, but not today. The, the, today is not the day for this kind of explanation. I am intentionally keeping it for our next working day. Sigma bonds are then formed from an end on. Instead of head on, your book uses the word end on overlap. Okay? Since the ends combine, two ends combine. Pi bonds are formed when sideways overlap of atomic orbitals. So, they have some basics, both theory, ki, hybridization, ki bhi, VBT, and VBT. You can tell them in a very orthodox way. But sometimes your book is telling you so much detail that in one line, the child doesn't understand. Need to give them a little bit of the story so that they are able to remember it in exams instead of just cramming the whole portion out. Instead, if you go with the theory, this not just helps them remember the whole thing in the form of a story. Instead, when they are going to explain these sentences more in A2, they will be equally prepared to go with a higher level of A2. Okay, is theory All right, Okay, I haven't cleared the three to one part yet, but we'll clear that. I haven't cleared SP3, SP2, SP yet. We'll all discuss that. Moving on later. The p atomic orbitals can also overlap linearly and on to form covalent bonds. The p orbitals involve both in forming single bonds. We modify the structure. Now, your book hybridization. Modified का word use कर रही है। वो orbital slightly altered होता है shape में। Make one of the lobes of p orbital bigger। हम ये discuss कर चुके हैं कि इस तरह का और इस तरह का जब combination होता है तो actually एक orbital बड़ा हो जाता है दूसरे से। ये process आप कर चुके हैं उसने ये draw भी किया हुआ है उसने इसलिए इसके नीचे hybridized orbital की जगह modified p atomic orbital लिखा हुआ है और वो ही carbon की example दे रहा है। अब आपकी बुक इसके ऊपर कुछ एक्स्ट्रा पीसेस ऑफ डिटेल बताती है जो एफएससी की बुक में नहीं थे सो आई एम गोना केटर दैट इन नेक्स्ट अपकमिंग लाइंस ठीक है प्रोसेस ऑफ मिक्सिंग एटॉमिक ऑर्बिटल्स वन एस इन थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल्स इसे हम हाइब्रिडाइजेशन कहते हैं हाइब्रिड्स का नाम हमने sp3 रख दिया क्योंकि एक s और तीन p ऑर्बिटल्स कंबाइन कर रहे हैं नाउ दिस नेम मेक्स अ लॉट मोर सेंस टू यू ठीक है sp हाइब्रिड में से उसके अंदर 1/4 s कैरेक्टर होता है क्योंकि एक s मिला था और three by four p कैरेक्टर होता है क्योंकि तीन p ऑर्बिटल्स कंबाइन किए थे। so this is three out of four parts, alright? my bad. this is three out of four parts and this is one out of four parts. आपकी बुक ये करती है, पास पेपर उठाएंगे तो आपको इस तरह के नंबर्स भी मिलेंगे, ठीक है? so whether they give you the fractions whether they give you the percentages, whether they give you decimals, ठीक है, जो मर्जी दें, इतनी maths और science हम आपको भी आनी चाहिए कि आप उसकी conversion easily कर सकते हों। कितना s और कितना p character है ये commonly questions में आता है। जितने s और p orbitals combine किए, I think उतनी percentage निकालना कोई problem नहीं होना चाहिए। आगे चलके हम sp2 की बात करेंगे, which clearly makes you understand कि एक s और दो p कोई से दो p उठा ले Combine karenge. So I guess you can easily understand this is 33% of the structure and this is 
66, 67, whatever you want to write a percent of the structure, or this is one by three, or this is two by three, ye bhi aapko khud likhna aajayega. Hence, SP2 hybrids, isi tana SP bhi exists karte hain. Kitni percent ho ni chahiye agar hum S or P orbital combine karenge, ek or ek. 50%. 50%, right. And what if we write it in fractions? What would that be? Is it enough? Yes, sir. So whether he talks about SP3, whether he talks about SP, whether he talks about SP2, or whether he comes up with something arbitrary, or he has came up with an idea that doesn't exist, what would you be able to do? Would you be able to answer it correctly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good. Now you know how to figure it out. Okay. And now you know if in a modified orbital combines with S or a modified orbital combines with a modified or a modified orbital combines with a P, all of that is formed as a sigma bond and it's the single bond. The toffee straight structure or irregularly shaped lobes are also explained over here for these molecular orbitals. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Okay, I guess we should 